Okay, um, now we are moving on to the log equations that I go ahead and call type 2 log equations. Now, the biggest difference that you're dealing with these log equations is that at some point in time, you have a constant value. So what happens with these equations? You, in order to solve them, they first must be in the form log to some base of x is equal to y. What is important about this is that you take all of the log terms and get all of the log terms on one side of the equation and move them and condense them. So the first step that you want to do is move all log terms to one side of the equation and condense if you need to. Now, if I'm looking over here that I have for my first equation um, over here, let me just give myself a little bit more room as I'm doing this. Um, this one's already condensed, so I don't have that step with this, but the after you've moved all the log equations to one side and condensed them, then my second step, step two, is to change into exponential form. So recall, if I have log b of x is equal to y, that b is the base, and I would write it as b to the power of y is equal to x. Now, notice, everything that we're doing here, we can only use this when the log has a base that is a value. This does not work for logs that have a variable base, but that is outside the scope of this class. So to set this up for first, this is log base 4. Go across the equation of 2 is equal to whatever was inside the log of x plus 3. So what I have here, that's just 16 is equal to x plus 3. So x, after subtracting 3 from both sides, I get x is equal to 13. So let's do the same thing for this next one. Again, this is log base 2. Go across to the 3, so that means 2 to the third power is equal to everything that's inside here, x minus 4. Go ahead and solve for x. I have 8 is equal to x minus 4. I add 4 to both sides, and for this question, I get x is equal to 12. Now, moving over to the other side of this paper, let's go ahead and take a look. There are two ways to do this que these questions. If I look at this question of 3, natural log of 2x is equal to 12, and 4, natural log of 3x plus 1 is equal to 8, I'm going to do each one differently. Know that you'll get the same solution either way. So with this one, I'm going to first go through and divide both sides by 3. By doing that, I now have the natural log of 2x is equal to 4. The understood base with the natural log, remember that has a base of e. That's okay. My answer can be in terms of e for this question. So now what I have is e to the, go across to the fourth, is equal to everything that was inside those parentheses, so it's equal to 2x.
divide both sides by 2 here. And x is in terms of e, so x is just e to the 4th all over 2. If you want to go through and put that in your calculator, um, if I ask you for an approximate solution, if I approximate solutions here always mean that you have a decimal answer. So that would just be e to the 4th divided by 2. An approximate solution here to four decimal places would be 27.299. This is 0, 07. I want to round to the fourth, so I'm going to change that to a 1. So x would equal 27.2991 as your approximate solution. Now, if you ever wanted to, could you bring that 4 up? Yes, but that's going to turn that and make that inside the argument really, really large. So I'm going to go through, divide this by 4 to start with. Then I'm left with the natural log of e. 3x plus 1 is equal to 2. e squared is equal to 3x plus 1. For this question, go ahead and subtract 1 and then divide by 3, so I get x is equal to e squared minus 1 over 3. Most of the time, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I ask you for the exact solutions, so that's the way I want the answer. All right, let's go ahead and take a look, look at another example. Now, this example is one of those that I was talking about in the beginning, where the first thing you have to do with this is go through and condense these logs. That turns that into, since it's addition, it turns into the property of logs where I can go through and multiply those two together. So inside the argument, I have log of x times x minus 3 is equal to 1. Now, the key with this question here is you have to remember this is understood to be log base 10 here. So when you're rewriting this, it is 10 to the first power is equal to x times x minus 3, or 10 is equal to x squared minus 3x. Now, I don't like the way this is written, so I'm going to go ahead and change the order here and make that x squared minus 3x minus 10 is equal to 0. All I did was take this 10, moved it over to the negative side, and now set my equation with my 0 on the right instead of on the left. I need to go through and factor this. If I factor this question, I have x minus 5 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. So my two solutions would be x is equal to 5 and x is equal to negative 2. But recall, we have domain that we need to check. And anything that is inside that log of a, a also must be greater than the 0. And if I look at that, that checks out for 5, but that does not check out for x is equal to negative 2. So that is not part of my solution. The only solution for this question would be x is equal to 5. All right, let's go ahead and scoot down here to the next one I have underneath this. Again, with this being multiplication, uh, excuse me, addition, I have to turn that into and condense this to one log term. When I do that, I have log base 3 of x plus 2 times x minus 1 is equal to 2. Now I need to change into exponential form. I 
I do that by taking whatever my base is, going across the equation, so I have 3 squared is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 1. Go ahead and multiply this out, and I have 9 is equal to x squared plus x minus 2. And this one gets a little bit heavy because I have x squared plus 1x minus 11 with this. And when I set this equal, I realize that this does not factor. So what you need to do with this one is we have to use the quadratic equation to solve for x. So, solving the quadratic equation for x, I have x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. I plug in my values for a, b, and c. a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 11. And what I end up getting when I solve for x and plugging all of that in, I get x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 45 all over 2. Now, that's a great solution for x. Um, we do need to go ahead and rationalize that. But in this case, because what we have to do is we must check the domain, Of this question, we really need to take a look at what happens as x is a decimal to see which pieces that we can go through and take out. Um, so after we go through and do this, uh, simplify this, the square root of 45, um, I know that that is equal to negative 1 plus 3 square root of 5 all over 2. As a decimal, that's approximately equal to 2.85. That's fine, and that one will work in my question. However, the next solution is when that is a negative 3 square root of 5 all over 2. As a decimal approximation, that is a negative 3.85. And this one is not a possible solution. So I only have one answer for this particular piece. Now, this video is getting a little bit long, um, so I want to go ahead and just point you towards this and make sure you look at the solution in the, at, in the notes. That are posted on this because you must be really careful. Warning here that you cannot turn this into a division sign inside two logs. You cannot say that the log of A over the log of B is equal to the log of A over B. That never ever works. What you have to do is put this over one. And when you do that, you end up getting the log of X plus three is equal to 2 times the log of x plus 1. You bring this 2 up, and then you solve this as you would the other equations. It is x plus 3 is equal to x plus 1 quantity squared. Oops, I forgot to write my log in there. All right, so um, check the notes for the finished solution on that. Um, your two answers when you finish and solve that will be uh, x is equal to uh, negative 2 and 1, but the only solution that works will be x is equal to 1.